Welcome to the Cabrera Lab podcast. Hey. Hello. <laughs> What's up? How are you? I'm amazing. How are you? I am fantastic. I am really, really pumped and excited for today. Oh, yeah? Yes. Because one of our very favorite holidays is this week. Oh, what's you know, that? You know what I'm talking about? July 4th. July 4th. Yes. Yes. July I'm 4th. We're talking about hot dogs. We're not talking about hot dogs only. We're going to talk about July 4th, why it's such an important holiday, what makes America the greatest country in the world, why oh, the Constitution... Like democracy. Democracy, why the Constitution is possibly the most brilliant document ever written. Wow. Not that I'm biased, but I am. Pretty biased. And, you know, just talk a little bit about it, because I think people get lost in hot dogs and potato salad and... Yeah. The flag is a decoration rather than the symbolic meaning of it and all of those things. Yeah. I think we should talk about July 4th. Holy moly. And all the things that are, all the mental models that are associated with July 4th. All right. Let's start with one of the fun ones, the Constitution, and why the Constitution (laughs) is quite possibly the most um, brilliant document, evolving document Mm -hmm. ever written, and what we... What we what we've talked about with our kids and our students about it. So I approach the Constitution probably differently than I think many people do. I mean, I'm not a uh, I'm not a constitutional scholar. So there are people on the planet that know much more about the Constitution, um, legal scholars and constitutional scholars that mm-hmm. know a lot more about the intricacies of the Constitution than I do. But I do approach it as a complexity scientist. And um, and I think it has really interesting that, that the perspective of complexity on the Constitution, for me, is the scientific explanation of why the Constitution is so remarkable. See, now that is amazing. Yeah. The scientific explanation of why the Constitution is <clears throat> so in complexity science, what, the, the first thing I think we got to, you know, start at the beginning, That's which slowly. isn't going to be really <laughs> talking about the Constitution or democracy or anything like that. But a lot of folks mm-hmm. in the general public will think that complexity, first of all, complexity is not good. Right. Um, you know, who wants complexity? Nobody wants complexity. So c- c- for the first thing is that this th- this notion of complexity is like not a positive thing, right? And we have to correct that a little bit because complexity is what makes parties cool. Complexities is what makes football games and soccer games and basketball games and 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 the Olympics and you know sports amazing. Complexity is what makes a play fantastic. Complexity is what makes poetry remarkable. Okay. Right? Complexity is what makes nature so stupendous. You know, I mean, complexity is what gives things richness. Right. Robustness, adaptability, fluidity, the unexpected. Mm-hmm. All of that comes from complexity. So it's a good thing. So it's a good it's thing. A complexity good thing. is like... The things we enjoy the most is complexity. Right. So, you know, if, if I were to give you a, a like a theatrical play uh-huh. and you just did it exactly like the the script said, it would be a terrible play. It would be a terrible movie. Right. Right. You, we've seen terrible movies where the actors are all stiff. and Fortnite. But something about. When an, when an actor can bring themselves to it and bring that richness and it, you know, it's very complex what's going on, but that's what brings a movie to life. That's because what there's brings dynamicism. There's, yeah, the dynamics. There's energy and, the, and exchange. Absolutely. Yeah. So complexity, first of all, is is like what we all appreciate about things, right? I mean, if if everybody just did what they did in practice, it would never amount to the craziness that is, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, a soccer game or, a, you know, a lacrosse game or a football game or a basketball game or any of these sports where, you know, the unexpected happens. Right. Craziness happens. Right. And all of that robust stuff, huh. that sort of 
unexpected stuff. That is complexity. So, so the you know, right off the bat, we have to kind of redefine what we think of as complexity. We want complexity in our life because we want richness in our life. Okay. The second thing that we have to understand from the science of complexity is that we would typically think of complexity as being synonymous with complicated. Right. Right. That the, these right. are syno these are synonyms. If right. you look, if you Google synonyms of complexity, one of them would be complicated. And that is why people think of it as negative, right? Yeah. Because of that association. Yeah. So and and in complexity science, those two things couldn't be more different. A complicated system is not the same as a complex system, hmm. right? So uh, a a Boeing 747, you know, jetliner is a complicated system. It's complicated, okay. no matter how, no matter what schematic you look at. It's, you know, it's got a lot of things going on, a lot, lot of relationships, a lot of things going on. Right. But it's entirely predictable, right? How so? Well, I mean, it, you know, you, you press this button, it does this thing, oh. you, you know. It, 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 so let me, I'll give you an, ex an example. Say... You should never, you know, uh, do what I'm going to explain. But, <laughs> but, uh, but so say, say, say I can like gauge my leg to kick the same way, the same uh, th three times, right? Yeah. And say I kick a, a ball, okay. you know, uh, like, or a rock. Let's say I kick a rock. So I kick the rock. Well, the rock's going to do this. When I kick it, the rock's going to do what it does based on the laws of physics, right? Right. Then I kick it again. And if I kick it with the same force and the same situation and all that kind of stuff, it, it's going to do the same thing, right? So you're going to get the same result every same result. time. Same result. I okay. kick it again, same result. Same, very predictable results. Well, the physics behind that is quite complicated, but it's not, there's no sort of complexity really happening, okay. right? You kick a rock, you get, you know, same, same stimulus, same response. Right, right. But if I kick a dog, don't kick a Don't dog. kick dogs, obviously. <laughs> but for educational for purposes For educational only. purposes. If I kick a dog, maybe the first time I kick the dog, it kind of cowers away. And the second time you kick a dog, it maybe stands its ground and growls at you. Yeah. The third time you kick a dog, it bites you. Appropriately right? so. Appropriately so. Well, that's an example of a, a, a an adaptive system a system that it, that dog is an adaptive system it's you're giving it the same stimulus ah, but see. you're getting different responses so complicated same stimulus same response over and over again <laughs> yeah. complex same stimulus yes. different response because that thing is adapting yes from time 1 to 2 to 3 yeah you know a complicated system is very different from a complex system because a complex system is adaptive and that's why we call them complex adaptive systems or CASs, right? right? CAS. Mm -hmm. So we want our organizations to be complex and adaptive. We want our children to be complex and adaptive. We want our lives to be complex and adaptive. Right. Ironically, even though we wouldn't describe it that way, we right. want that, right? We wouldn't use those words, no, right? But we actually well, we want that we might because we're nerds, but, but we want to have complexity in our life. We want to have that robustness, that adaptivity, that liveliness, yes. that aliveness. And a little bit of un unpredictability. And a little bit of unpredictability. Yeah. Even even when we do uh, uh, eye, scan, eye uh, movement research with little babies, yeah. what do they pay attention to? Why does eye, eye movement study, why do they work, right? They mm -hmm. work because the baby is gonna pay attention to something novel. Yes. So we can tell when the baby changes, you know, we can see what's novel to the baby, what's new to the baby, yeah. right? Well, we're the same way. We like novel things, right? And right. novel things come from complexity. Interesting. Right? Right. Un the unexpected comes from complexity. Okay, so going back. First of all, complexity is not a bad thing. It's a great thing. Yes. It's not just a great thing. It's the thing we all want. Right. We all love. You know, it's the thing that makes us so excited when we go to hockey games or, you know, yeah. things like that. Uh, it's the thing that gets us excited about love. It's the thing. All of that's complexity. 
Second, complexity is not the same as complicated. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's the second thing that we have to understand. Yep. A complicated system, you might you might even go so far as to say complicated systems, they're kind of boring. Yeah. Complex systems, really interesting. Would it be fair to say complicated systems are more static and complex systems are more dynamic? Yes, yes. In that sense? Absolutely. So another another example I give you is, say you have a train system. Well, a train and the, the tracks and all that kind of stuff, very complicated, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but if I cut the track, the everything downstream from the, the me cutting the track yeah. is going to stop. Right. Right? Yeah. Until we fix the track. Mm -hmm. But now take a road system, like a, you know, system of roads. Yeah. Right? If I, if there's an accident, you know, on your way to work, what do all those little agents in their cars do? They adapt. They adapt. They go, they way. take a different route. Do they all take the same different route? No, they take different different routes. Hmm. And the system literally adapts to the injury. Interesting. So a road system with cars and, and independent little agents driving the cars is a much more complex system that has many more degrees of freedom and adaptivity right. than a kind of linear you know, railroad system. Yeah, now, the railroad system is complicated. There's yeah. tremendous complicatedness, but it's not a complex and adaptive system, right? right? The road system is going to adapt. Right. Okay, so that establishes that the second, second one. one, which is differentiating yep. complexity from complicated. The third thing, and this is like mind-blowing. To me, this is like happy mind blown emoji, which I created just for this kind of idea. We love that. Uh, there were no, as a, as an aside. <laughs> why not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> I uh, I should have worn that T-shirt. I wish I had known we were going to talk about this. No, it's uh, not fun if you know what we're talking about. Yes. So, as an aside, all the em I have an, a serious issue that I have the share with you serious? and our audience oh, it's a gosh. serious issue wait we're getting serious <laughs> all of all every single one of the mind-blown emojis that exist today yes and that's you know microsoft makes emojis and google makes everybody makes emojis yeah. but all of the emojis that are out there that are mind-blown emojis are all like shocked and are like, oh, or like <laughs> Sad. Unhappy, yeah. sad, or scared looking. But there's no happy mind blown emojis. So I created a happy mind blown emoji. I know. I call it the HMBE. Happy mind blown emoji. Okay. okay. I love your acronym. HMBE. <laughs> so the happy mind blown emoji is critical because when you have your mind blown, which science does for you all the time, when you yes. when you really get into like cool science, the whole point of it is that it blows your mind. Like you go, oh my God, that's incredible. And you're like happy about it. You're like, yeah. it's so yeah. mind blowingly incredible. And some of the most simple and basic things are mind blowing. In a good way. In a profound and <laughs> and sublime way. We should start selling those t-shirts. Right? Yes. <laughs> so, so first off, I just want to put in a plug for like the the big emoji industry. <laughs> they should change the, the sad mind blown emojis, the SMBs <laughs> and the spooky Mind blown emojis, also SMBs, to HMBs. <laughs> is please. Is there an emoji? Is there an emoji industry? Uh, there's an emoji syndicate. <laughs> there's an emoji mafia. industry. An emoji mafia. <laughs> Whoever controls the emoji space. <laughs> I'm talking to you. Oh my god. Change it. We need more happy mind blown emojis. So. That's funny. That's that's an aside that has very little to do with what we're talking about. But um, anyway. So we were talking. 
what you were talking so about? So I'm about, yeah, now number I three, know. Yes, number which three. Which is going to blow which your Which is going to be an HMBE. HMBE. And if it's not an HMBE, a happy mind blown emoji. Then what? Then there's something wrong with it. Because <laughs> this should blow your mind. Or buy the t-shirt. <laughs> this should blow your mind. So a lot of times with students, I say it like this. Sometimes with s seemingly simple ideas, seeming like, like kind of basic ideas, sometimes it, somebody taught me how to drink wine once. I think, yes. It was probably you. Well, we took the, I took the Cornell Yeah, and you course, taught me. And I taught you. Yeah. Yeah. So you taught me how to drink wine because I didn't know how to drink wine. Serious mistake. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I knew how to drink, like swallow wine, but I didn't know how to. Taste. I didn't know how to actually appreciate <laughs> wine, right? You know, when you take wine, apparently yes. you're supposed to like first you you smell, smell it, it and you you know look swirl. at it, you do the swirl, you look at the legs and all that kind of stuff, and and then when you, but the one of the things I learned was when you put it in in your mouth, you let it sit on your tongue because your tongue right. has all these, and then you kind of breathe over it, you yes. kind of ripple air. And you cause it to ripple on your tongue, and that like aerates it. And and you actually, if you try this at home, this is something you can try at home. It it makes a huge difference. Like you're like, taste whoa, it. I can really actually taste you this thing. You almost like it. chew it. You're yeah. like chewing the wine, right? You experience and the you whole body of the wine. Yeah, yes. it's cool. Yeah, I thought it was cool. It is cool. So that was an HMB moment for me. I was like, "Whoa!" Something yes. so simple really yeah. actually changes your experience. That's right. So sometimes I use that metaphor when you come across certain ideas, which you know, for really intelligent people, they're gonna they're gonna just be like, "Oh yeah, whatever," and they just move on. Right. Right. But I always tell that story of Einstein and how how uh, the reporter asked him like how did you yes. you know discover uh, relativity mm -hmm. and he says uh, oh that was easy when when all my grade school companions had moved on to more advanced things I got stuck on like time and space and, and I stayed left. stuck <laughs> until I was thirty years old yeah you know something so basic so simple sometimes we skip over it yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> so we were talking, you were, you're about to tell us number three, which is going to blow our minds. You so said, what I'm trying to say is <laughs> number three, this is all set up for number three. I know, I'm saying. Yeah. We're ready. You're ready? You have set us up. So you got to chew this. We're going to chew gotta, It's going to seem right. simple. It's going to seem ridiculous. It's going to seem like whatever. Did he just say something important? But you got to like chew it. You got to like let it sit on your tongue on marinate. your brain and marinate in the soak folds in. of your brain you gotta like soak we it. we are in, all right? on the edge of our seats remember i said complexity and and complicated are going to be synonyms yes well complexity and simplicity are going to be antonyms yes they're going to be completely the opposite yes they're not <laughs> right complexity and simplicity are two sides of the same coin interesting that's the beauty of it and um you know everybody from prigogine uh you know at the turn of the century all the way to the modern day you know santa fe institute and where i did some of my uh studies and um murray galman and you know just some really fantastic minds some discovered yeah you know, some pretty sharp people yes. discovered this deep connection between complexity and simplicity. Yeah. And for, okay. in fact, Murray Galman, who won the Nobel Prize, yes. he kind of was uh, instrumental in discovering quarks. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he actually didn't want to call the science of complexity complexity science. He wrote this very simple paper called Let's Call It Plectics. Right. And, and the whole point of that very short paper was hey, you know, we're at the cusp of this new science called complexity science. And, and I think we shouldn't call it that because it's a misnomer because it doesn't capture the idea that simplicity is so much a part of it. That right? simplicity is so much a part of complexity. Yes. That they're so inter That they're so interrelated right. that we shouldn't even try to separate. So he, he suggested we call the science plectics. It never caught on. Um, Mm -hmm. But plectics comes from the root plec. And plec either means like 
intertwined or braided. I see. So plaque is actually at the root. It's the root. The root plaque, P L E K, is at the is in the word simplex, uh, which precedes simple. Right. And also complex. I see. So the, ironically, in our language, it's in simple and it's in complex. Right. Right. So he's saying plectics because that gets to what's common between them. That there is that there are simple so rules right. that underlie the complexity. Simple rules that underlie the complexity, and this is a HMBE moment. This is a this is like a mind a happy mind blown emoji moment. Yeah. Where you go like, whoa, wait a minute. These two things that we think of as totally antonyms are actually, are actually inseparably intertwined. Simplicity actually drives complexity. Okay, interesting. So you said simplicity underlies complexity. There are simple rules. Yeah. I think that's what you simple said. Rules. Simple rules underlying the behavior of complex yeah. Systems. So the way that these complex adaptive systems tend to work mm -hmm. is that they have a lot of agents. Now, an agent can be anything. An agent could be an ant. It could be a person. It could be a person in a car. It could be a, it could be a bird. It could be a lion. It could be. It, it could actually be groups of things. So it could be companies. Mm -hmm. It could be towns. It could be countries in a large, you know, uh, geopolitical space. The agent is kind of a generic term that just means like the, the thing that has agency to follow certain simple rules. And those simple rules could be things that they've adopted or they could be things that are literally kind of programmed into their genetics. Right. 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 So, you know, our dog, Kachi. I do. Kachi's an Australian cattle dog. I know. She's very cute. She always gets overshadowed by Bruno. Because <laughs> Bruno is so big and she, so summer. Tiny. Yeah. But Kachi is an Australian cattle dog, a blue healer. Yes. And she herds people. She herds you by nipping your heels, right? She herds you <laughs> oh, where yeah. she wants you. Yeah. Well, Kachi's never met a cow. She's never yeah. been a herding, an actual herding dog. Right. But somehow that's built into her genes, yeah. into her genetics, right? Mm -hmm. She was born with that, in, that sort of intuitive sort of ability. encoded Yeah, in it's her. encoded in her. Right. So some of these simple rules can be actually encoded in organisms, and then some of them are learned. But remarkably, all these, co all these complex adaptive systems have simple rules underneath, right? So you said a lot there. Simple rules, agents, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Just give us an example. Blah, give people blah, an example. Blah. You know, like, there's a lot of stuff. Blah, blah, blah. So I like to hear examples. Animals, yes. people, stuff. Well, let me give you an example. Yeah. All right. So we're going to do, let's say that we have an anthill. Okay. So you've got one thing that's an yeah. anthill. Yeah. And it's got a bunch of ants in it, right? Uh -huh. But these aren't the ants. Let's say that you have one pile of food that's like here mm -hmm. close to the anthill and then another pile of food that's a little bit further from the anthill right and another pile of food that's even further than that one okay. right so you have three piles of food and they're all di different distances from the they're all different distances from the anthill okay. well the the basic goal of the ants is to get some food but they don't want to spend a lot of time out and about you know, because they could be susceptible to predation or something like right. that, right? So they want to quickly and efficiently get food. Now, each individual ant is relatively not smart, right? Well, it's neuronally challenged. Neuronally challenged, <laughs> it has yes. One neuron. So it has, it's, you know, like a, a single like, a neuron for a brain or whatever, you, right. know, you know what I mean? So the ant. Each individual, no individual ant would would be able to do something intelligent and, and strategic with this food right. situation. N not even be able to sort of see the situation to right. begin with, never mind navigate it, right? right? So you think to yourself, okay, we got basically a dumb ant. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to multiply that ant by 100,000 ants. That's a lot. It's a lot of ants. So you think, I got a dumb ant, I'm going to add couple hundred thousand more dumb ants. Mm -hmm. What am I going to get? 
I'm going to get super dumb. <laughs> a lot right? of dumb. A lot of dumb, right? <laughs> right. That would be what you would expect, right? You add dumb plus dumb plus dumb, you're not going to get right. smart. That would be crazy, right? right. You're going to get dumb. Yeah. But that's not what happens. So here's some complexity because it's surprising, right? The baby goes, what? Right? You're like, what? What, what just happened? Right? Right. <laughs> it's a callback to the... No? That must be some internet thing that I'm not aware of. No, the baby. Remember the baby with the, the eye movement? Oh. The novel, the baby sees that. <laughs> I thought it was some meme or something. No, no. You all talk about memes. I'm like, what the hell's a No, meme? the baby, if a baby was watching that. <laughs> they'd be like, wow. They'd be like, oh, interesting. Something interesting's happening. Right. right? So what happens in yes. these anthills is the ants go out. They look for food. They gather up the food at the closest one first, the second closest one second, and the third closest one third. As if they've planned it all along. Yeah. And So you're like, wait a minute. How'd that happen? That's pretty intelligent behavior right. for a bunch of dumb things. Mm -hmm. So where did the smart come from? If, the, if all that is in this system is dumb, if all the agents are effectively dumb, and by dumb, I don't mean that they're like literally stupid. I just mean none of them are capable right. of doing that. By themselves. By themselves. Right. And yet that happens. So where does that come from? Where is the intelligence in the system? Is it in the ants? No. Is it in the system? Well, apparently, because the system is, is doing something intelligent. Right. But where does it come from? I just had this mental image of one ant with a megaphone standing at the top of the hill, directing them. Yeah. Well, that that's actually <laughs> Johnny, what, go left. <laughs> we've been looking at these systems for thousands of years, yeah. and, and that's actually what we believed. We believed yeah. for a long time that there must be some, like, A-type personality, like General MacArthur yeah. kind Leader of ant that's like, I am going to teach you all what to do, right? Yeah. But the problem is that there isn't. No. And there's in many of these systems, there's not even enough time for that kind of communication to, to occur. So we right. know that that's not what's happening. In fact, what these systems are is self-organizing. Okay. They're not organized by a leader. There's no leader. Mm -hmm. They're self-organizing systems, right? They mm -hmm. literally self-organize. And they're super organisms, meaning they're like a bunch of little individual organisms that are acting like a single Super organism. We yes. see these in the murmuration of flocking behavior, in fish schools, yeah. in ants, in traffic patterns, in the way blood flows, all kinds of things. Yeah, the most popular one is the fish. The fish. All yeah. the fish seeming like yeah. they're one bigger fish. There's like posters a shark or and stuff something. in yeah. Forest yeah. yeah. The question is where does the intelligent behavior come from? And the answer is so we, the intelligent behavior is what's complex, that's the emergent property. So out of this system emerges intelligence. Right. Wow. Intelligence. Mm -hmm. Right? Out of stupidity, individual stupidity comes smart. That's, that's like, wow. That is wow. So where did it come from? Is it magic? No. No. It turns out that these ants are just following simple rules. And that's where the simplicity is. Simple rules. Mm -hmm. And in this particular case, it's just three simple rules. One, go out and find food randomly. Two, when you find sh food, shoot pheromones out of your butt. Yep. Three, never cross a pheromone trail. And it's that third one that's really dynamic, right? Never cross. If, you, if you're just walking around looking for food and you find a pheromone trail, you get on it. You right. can't cross it. And once you get on it, then that increases the probability of you finding the food, which increases the probability of you shooting pheromones out of your butt, mm -hmm. which increases the size of the pheromone trail, which attracts more ants, which causes a cascading effect to find that food faster bring it back to base. Right. So it's so the rules lead to that collective behavior yes. and that collective behavior leads to the yes. outcome of the system. Yeah. So In when we sense. ask the question, where did this intelligence come from? Mm -hmm. It came from the simple rules. So the, where did the complexity come from? The thing that's cool, 
Remember we talked about complexity is cool? Mm -hmm. The thing that's cool, where did it come from? It came from the simple rules. So all of this, I know we haven't really been talking about the topic, but all of this now we can bring back to why the Constitution of the United States of America is such a remarkable document. Yeah. Because it's the simple rules. The simple it's rules. the simple rules that give us the robust, beautiful, dynamic complexity of democracy. But we have to take care of the simple rules. Yes. We have to take real close care of the simple rules. Because if we change those rules without thinking deeply about why those rules are there, then we'll change the whole system. Yeah, the outcome of the The outcome. System. Yeah. The big macro outcome is the result of these micro rules. Right. The big complex wow outcome, mm -hmm. human democracy, yeah. is the result of these tiny little micro simple rules. Right. Set and if we them. change yeah. them without thinking deeply about how they will dynamically play themselves out, bad things can happen. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have these two ants. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's one ant that's kind of like rebellious and like kind of doesn't like fall on the rules. We could call that Aunt Derek. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's this other ant that's like Laura. And she's like, no, we got to follow oh. on the rules, right? <laughs> and so like, let's say you're like, hey, you know, this kind of ridiculous rule about how you can't cross the pheromone trail. Yeah. I think we should cross it. And she says no. She's like, no. We should not. Let's not do that today. That would be bad. Yeah, that would be bad. And I go, but you can see the tyranny inherent in the system that we can't cross this pheromone trail. We should just cross this pheromone trail. What's it going to It's no big deal. One trail, one little step. Let's just try it. No, she says no. She says no. Got to follow the rules. The rules Come are there on, for a don't reason. Don't be such a stiff. Just cross <laughs> the pheromone trail, right? And you can imagine having this big debate yeah. about crossing or not crossing the pheromone trail. Yeah. And we, and you can imagine in a Parisian cafe smoking cigarettes, having some philosophical debate about this. But if you've limited it to just whether or not you're crossing the pheromone trail or not and how ridiculous it is that, and how oppressive it is that you can't cross the pheromone trail and you're just debating at that local level. Yes, without the global Without the global implications of what that would do to the entire colony if everybody started crossing the pheromone trail, then you're missing the connection between the simple underlying rules mm -hmm. and the complex emergent wow the outcome. The thing you want. The wow factor. Right. Right? The wow factor is coming from the simple rules. So, again, bringing this back to democracy and the Constitution. Mm -hmm. We're doing that all the time. Those two little ridiculous ants that are having that ridiculous philosophical conversation. Yes. We're doing that all the time. We take one of the amendments and we debate. Well, should we do this or do that or blah, 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 or it's not about hunting yeah. or whatever. And we don't take into account the bigger picture, right? We don't take into account the bigger picture. So the First Amendment is one of our rules. Mm -hmm. And the First Amendment is about the freedom of speech. Yes. Now, that's guaranteed most of the time there there are some very small cases where it's not you can't yeah. yell fire in a theater th for example there are a few but guardrails there are a few there. guardrails but generally speaking it's the protection of speech mm -hmm. now will people use that protection to say things that offend us yes will they use that protection to do things you know to 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 say things that we wish they wouldn't say absolutely mm -hmm. hateful things Right. But does that mean we should stop them from saying it? No. No. I mean, if you go anywhere that doesn't have that right, yeah. you understand why we need the right. That's right. And so, yeah. and what would happen once you start that? Once you start that, 
a cascading effect happens that affects the macro, the thing you care about. Because like in the whole scheme of things, do we care if Joe Schmo can't say his vitriolic hate? Not really. Like I don't give I don't care if Bob can't be vitriolic. Bob. <laughs> what I care about though is if we stop Bob and then we stop Frank and then yeah. Frank and Bob get into power and stop me. Right. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. Then it's not democracy. Then it's not democracy. Yeah. I care about the wow. The complexity yeah. is what I care about. Meaning the meaning the thing that we all value so much, yeah. the concept of democracy, yeah. is so critically dependent on the, the simple rules That's right. and the dynamics between and among them at the local level that happen over time to create what we know and yes. what we want. And the problem is, as you said... We tend to cherry pick into these tiny arguments. Not only that, we politicize them. We have agendas. Yes. We manipulate and we lose the wider context. And Good it's very method. easy to get distracted by that local heated argument mm -hmm. and lose that context that matters so much. That's right. And people do that on purpose. That's right. People do it on purpose because That's they right. they have an agenda. They have Oh gosh, that would be a whole nother podcast of all of that but i mean right. it's hard it's hard for people i think to i think people lose that connection it's hard to see that connection. it's very hard to see in fact it's so hard to see because simplicity and complexity are antonyms in the right. general sphere right mm -hmm. complicated and complex is not a good thing in the general sphere but if we understand that complexity is the wow, complexity is the love, complexity is the cool sporting event. Yeah. Complexity is the thing that we absolutely, that grabs us. Yeah. Democracy gives me chills, real democracy. But we, we haven't gotten there yet, but we're a more perfect union, we're right? We're working on it. We're working on it. Well, sort a of. more perfect <laughs> union, a more perfect union. We're, we're not there yet, but we're always striving for a more perfect union. Right. That's my favorite line. We the people in order to establish a more perfect union. Mm -hmm. We focus on the we the people part. Right. But the cool part is the more perfect, that better every day. Right. We're going to get better every day. We're going to it's not perfect, but we're mo moving we're working on it. in the trajectory mm -hmm. of more perfect for everybody. Right. That's based on those rules. Those simple rules is what brings about that more perfect union, that more perfect democracy, right? Yeah. And if we start whittling away at those simple rules without understanding how they manifest in the macro, how the micro manifests in the macro. And that, you know, that, that holds good. for either, either end of the Absolutely. extremes, like Absolutely. whatever you're trying to do when you're messing with a simple rule or an amendment or some tenant in the Constitution, it doesn't matter what perspective you're coming from, you have to understand the wider context. You have to understand the yes. wider effect of those changes because they go through the whole system. Yes. And our founding fathers, and now you, you can obviously, you can look into a, a man's history and his past and his personal life, and you can find, you know, whatever you want, all kinds of things that maybe he wasn't perfect. None of us are perfect. Well. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, so aside from the, those, the fact that none of us are perfect. True. And, and none of our founding fathers were perfect. They collectively came together and did something quite magnificent together. Yes. They did something quite magnificent together. And, mm -hmm. and statistically so. Like our constitution is statistically different than all the other constitutions in the world. If you look yes. at the if you look at the actual science of constitutionality yes. and the way and the degree to which these constitutions evolve and don't. Right. Our constitution is unique, statistically speaking. Yes. We have to understand that our founding fathers collectively, not individually, but collectively did something quite unique, mm -hmm. quite rare and inspired. Right. And they came up with some rules. And those rules actually are dynamic with each other. Yes. Just like the ant rules, like shoot pheromones, never cross the pheromone trail. Yeah, they're all really Amendment good. one, not amendment two. Amendment two guarantees 
many of the other amendments. So right. people say all the time, well, wh why do you need uh, this type of weapon for hunting? Well, Amendment 2 is not about hunting. Amendment 2 is not about hunting. Amendment 2 was, the Second Amendment, was about how absolute power corrupts absolutely, and eventually the people would have to possibly defend themselves against governments. Right. And the Second Amendment was designed to make it so that the government was always more afraid of the people than the people were of the government. Right. And during the time that it was written, that makes total sense. Yes. Yes. And yeah. even now it makes total sense. I mean, it makes yes. total sense as a, as a rule for society and yes. for organizing ourselves. It makes sense. Yes. And I think what is interesting about that is that's a great example of people taking their political agenda yep. and trying to dissect and manipulate the public's understanding of the meaning of that amendment for Absolutely. their own purposes. Absolutely. They do it with free speech. They do it, they do it with, with everything. Miranda, they do it, they with, do it with everything. everything. And I think that's I think that's the wider point which is remember that these these tenants, these amendments are the rules in place. They're all interconnected <laughs> and they need to be happening. And we need to look at them at the macro right. level. Not the micro, because exactly. because all these debates, all these bifurcating, all these like yeah. polarized debates, it's fine. We should have those debates. Yeah, we should encourage those debates. That's what the First Amendment's all about. We should encourage those debates to happen. All I would love to interject or I inject into those debates is that they should happen at two levels. Yes. That they're and they're mostly happening at the micro level. They're mostly happening at there's this thing that's happening in schools which we all hate, right? School shootings, terrible. No, nobody is for that, mm -hmm. and that's happening at a micro at a micro level, right? And so we all want to respond to that. Mm -hmm. We all want to respond to that, and and we should respond to that. But what does our response look like at the macro level? Right. Well, right. you know, with that issue in particular, yeah. we know, because yeah. we've talked to the Violence Project and the yes. people who have really done the yes. research, yes. that that is a web, of causality, a web of causality, which means it's a web of solutions. That's right. There's no one quick fix, but, that's right. but it's the interconnectedness between the solutions that's going to matter because of the interconnectedness between and among the causes. Right. So I think that's what you mean when you say, like, go up to the macro level and see the bigger picture and don't try to... Yeah. And not just the bigger picture of decreasing a particular thing that you want to decrease or increase in society, mm -hmm. but the biggest picture of do we want a people, a, a, a government of mm -hmm. and for the people, right? i.e. democracy. Right. Do, do we want to continuously strive for a more perfect union around a government of and for the people. Now, I know that there are aspects of our government that are not that. Right. But we're continuously striving for that. Yes. And I think we need to be <clears throat> willing to have the conversations about, the, about from both perspectives, from all perspectives, and not continue to be polar, polarized. Yeah, I'm glad, you, I'm glad sort of... you shifted from, you know, to all perspective, because there's there's not the, 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 the other thing that we do all the time is uh -huh. we we assume there's two perspectives, right? Because we there's are somebody. very bivalent, but there's many perspectives like mm -hmm. the web of causality. Yep. There are many different things that cause any given one thing. Mm hmm. Anyway, we're getting a little bit off track on 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 that. But but um. There are so many things that we think we understand just on their face, right? And so when you say the U.S. Constitution, we all think we have our own mental model of what that is and what it means and, and how we interpret it, embody it, whatever. But the, the truth of the matter is, I don't think, like you were saying, the micro-macro, the simple rules, the agents, the dynamic of that leading to the outcome of what we all 
want, which is democracy, and also knowing that democracy is a work in progress. A work in progress. Yes. You know, I think I think a that's a beautiful work in progress. It's amazing. And it is by definition the emergent property, the complexity that emerges out of a simple of a, a system of simple rules and and free agents, agents that are free. They're free, mm -hmm. right? Our founding fathers somehow stumbled upon, either by hook or crook, by genius or by mistake, who cares? But they somehow stumbled on a deep understanding of the most advanced science we have today. Yes. Complexity science. And they built our constitution somehow based on it. And our country. And our country. Mm -hmm. And it is so remarkable. It's such a remarkable document. And it is an evolving document. And it should evolve. And it has it, it has stipulations about how it can evolve. Mm -hmm. And we should evolve it. The only thing that I hope people take away, I guess, on this, this is the July 4th episode. This is the is July right? 4th episode. So the, the, the thing that I hope they'll take away from it is just this understanding of Democracy is the wow of complexity. It's the emergent, it's the thing that emerged. Democracy is not a thing. It's a, it's a thing that comes out of the system. Yes. It's not a thing you put into the system. It's a thing that comes out of the system. Mm -hmm. It's the wow. It's the, it's the sporting event that you go, wow, how did that happen? Yeah. How did democracy happen? Oh, what? okay, what are the inputs? The inputs are the free agents, right? The semi-autonomous agents, as we call them. Uh, and, and the, and the simple rules. And so take care yes. of those simple rules because they matter. Mm -hmm. So have the debate about crossing that pheromone trail, have the debate because things evolve, mm -hmm. but understand what the debate is really about. It's yes. not about those two ants crossing that trail. Yeah. It's about all the ants crossing all the trails. Yeah. It's actually about all the ants. And the emergent property that comes out when all the ants cross all the trail. And in that particular case, the emergent property that would that would result from that change in the rules would be the annihilation of the colony. Yes. Let that sink in. Yes. So if we if we think about this as a simple conversation about two ants and a pheromone trail. We're kind of missing the whole point, which is the annihilation of the colony mm -hmm. is is being discussed. That's right. Because we're missing the connection between the collective dynamics of all the different agents following those rules or not following those rules or following those rules in this way versus that way. Right. The collective dynamics of all of those 308 million agents mm -hmm. following a rule one way versus another is what's going to lead to what we call our democracy. And we have to take care of it. Yeah, we got to take care of and it because it's remarkable. Role. We all have a role in it. Is it perfect? Care. Absolutely not. Have we done dumb things? Sure. But it is absolutely unique among democracies. It is it is it is something we should take care of. Yes, and we should think about that and remember that. That document is an inspired document. It is. And we are all very lucky. We're very lucky to have Very it. lucky. And with that... And it can evolve. It, 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 it actually captures how it can evolve and, and that it should evolve. And it has evolved. It adapts. It, it adapts, adapts to the times. Yes. It adapts to the needs. It adapts to things that come up. But we got to understand how it plays how it plays into the macro. We often say the micro makes the macro. Mm -hmm. The micro makes the macro. It's these micro agents and the micro rules that they're following that add up in dynamic ways to create the macro picture that we see. So <clears throat> when you're watching the fireworks, eating hot dogs, remember how lucky we are yeah. and how much a part of the system we are and that we all have a responsibility for helping to shape the outcome. Absolutely. And we're lucky. We are. Very lucky. All and right. we got work to do. All right. What do you think for that? Is that it? Is that a wrap? I think that's a wrap. <laughs> Happy 4th of July, everyone. Happy 4th of July.